Benjamin to Hi. It is time to have a good time. Good morning, good car morning. guys and car gals. Woo. Ramirez, the car guy. This is Fred Lenard, the Sunline Bureau. And we are excited to have a special, special guest inside oh, of the man. cafe today. Nancy Benjamin is brewing solutions with us, and we are excited <laughs> to going on. I'm Welcome. excited to be here, guys. It's a good morning. It's a good yes, it do what we came here to do. Um, thank you for having me on the show. Couldn't pick a better show to be on. Inside, I'm really feeling some of them horns getting ready to announce that today is another day that solutionaries are rising. Woo, woo. We're excited to be here with some more so solutionaries. Uh, another solutionary that's doing great things up in Michigan, and uh, we're just excited to have her here. But we want to let you all know that this brew has been brought to you by Big and, and Elite FI Partners. That's These right. Some incredible individuals and, uh, and companies that have. Uh, definitely seeing that we are here to bring some solutions to the industry, changing mindsets into a positive mental form so that we can do great things. I'm just excited to have some great people I here. Love, I love how you broke the sentences like they once so, sounded like three. That, <laughs> we so, are excited. So, but no, we are. We're super excited this morning. We have a special guest, Nancy. Nancy's been somebody that I've seen on social media that just brings light every time she puts a post out there. She has a she she definitely is all about making things positive, putting things on a great note. I know she's been through some stuff over the last couple of years in her life, but yet she still is a beacon of light out there. And I'm so glad to have her on the show. She's a former podcast host herself. But I'm gonna influence and make her do it again. She needs to be out there doing a podcast. <laughs> Seriously, your voice needs to be out there. But the most important thing for me about podcasts, so you know, and I think that it, it, maybe you probably already know this, but it's bringing other voices in and allowing them to come. And when you can do that, your podcast will just, it's just, it's butter. You learn so much, you share it so much, and then you get to, you, and everybody in the world gets to have a little piece of that. So we're so excited to have you here. Thank you so Whoa. much for joining. Good morning. I'm excited Good morning. to be here. I'm excited to be here. And yes, I did have a podcast before. We're going to leave that later on. It's, it's we'll talk about this some more, yeah. Back to, but it's it's nice to be on one again, getting interviewed this time, not being the one interviewing. <laughs> I know what you mean. When I get interviewed, it's um, it's a different rush, completely it different is. rush. Yeah. I, 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 when I remember the very first time I ever was interviewed, I was extremely nervous, almost to the vomit point. But once I was like one second into it, I was fine. But it put them all the way leading to that moment. I was like, oh, my goodness, am I going to be? No, I was mad. Everything was great. So we're excited. So we know you're going to have a great time today. We know you're going to bring some knowledge. We know that you're going to have some, you're going to be able to share some stuff for people that are just going to be able to open their eyes. Up. And hopefully some people can give you, reach out to you afterwards if they need some help in their dealerships. You know, that's, that's the so let people know what you do, how you, how you do it, and how to get a hold of you. And we're going to make that happen for you today. So. Nancy, before we do that, we do this thing, before we do everything, there's one thing we always do. What? We make sure to apply three F's as the formula to make sure that we keep growing. And these three F's include you wiping off the weight of failure, unforgiveness, fear, worry, doubt, uh, or anything that somebody has said negative about you. All that negativity has to get off your shoulders. you got to wipe it off. Then, number two, we are going to take the hands that are free uh, to do great things and focus on where it is that we are going, and then we're going to fly. Three motions. Here we go on three. One. <laughs> go ahead, cross it on. There you go. One, two, three. Say forgive. Forgive. Focus. focus. Right here. Fly. And keep growing. Keep growing. Keep. Yeah. Get some. There we go. <laughs> You did that, that so perfect. Perfect. Stuff, there we go. I, I, you know what? That felt good. It starts off my day. I like this. That's it. That's the so. best way to start the day. There's no doubt. So we are going to jump into our five line of weekly, Nancy. 
And our five runner is designed to just bring out you, talk about you, your origin story from what, how you, be, where you began to where you are now. So I'm excited about this. Let's get this thing started. The very first question, what drives you when you wake up every morning to get out of bed instead of sit there and hit the snooze button 20 times and sleep in all day long? What motivates you to go ahead and just try to be more than you were the day before? Ooh, that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> It's, it's loaded because there's so many things that built up to this moment. Every single day that you get up, there are people that depend on you. You know, they rely on you. Um, they look up to you. They're inspired by you. Or, you you know, you're inspired by them. It's an opportunity to do something better every single day. And, you know, it's, for me, it's I came from very, very humble beginnings. So, it's it, the the fuel that I get from that humble beginning is what drives me every single day. To be honest. Oh yes, I love it. It's that it's the drive to to be more and know that you are more. You know, there's this United States, the world, and it allows us to become people that we want to be. That's right, it, and, it, and you don't let the past determine your future. So. That's right. Right. That's right. So true. Right. So true. Exactly. You know, and and everybody can start over right this second. You know, no matter every what, every morning is a chance to start fresh. Do not let your past define you. You know, and I, I love that you said that because it's so true. Because everybody has a checkered past at some point, right? Everybody has made mistakes right. in the past. Everybody's no one's perfect in this whole planet. There's to include myself. We're none of us are perfect. In here, <laughs> but what we all strive to do is just be better. You don't have to even be perfect. You just have to be better than you were the day before. And, I, and that's that's what we strive to be, and I can tell that's what what your purpose is, just to be better, to help more people, to do these things. So you're a solutionary at heart, period. That's where your that's where your drive comes from, to be a solutionary. So welcome to the show, right? So thank you. Blue, thank blue. you. I'll just jump in there real quick and, yeah. and and dig into this uh, this humble beginning side of it, because there's there's something about this business that is. But nearly magical. It's, it's you can come in one way, mm-hmm. uh, don't know how to dress, don't really know how to speak, don't know uh, people, don't have connections, don't have an education, may not have graduated high school. There's so many things that have been weights on people to jump into a profession where they can make real, uh, good, solid money, and I mean become millionaires. You can really find your way whether you're you're cleaning the car up to owning the dealership. Uh, that path can be created inside of this business. That's why I love uh, this business. Uh, we do come from humble beginnings as well. Uh, but Nancy, in, as, as far as the humble beginnings that you have um, and, and how you've seen the business uh, be able to bend towards helping promote and build up other people, remember, it's not been race hasn't stopped people from necessarily succeeding no. inside of this. Religion hasn't stopped people from succeeding inside of this business. Um, p- political parties, preferences, none of that stuff stops people from succeeding in this business unless they let it, unless their humble beginnings are things that they take back in and they use as an excuse for why they can't advance forward. So real quick, I just want to dig a little bit more into that. I guess I'll go ahead and use that as my question. Describe some of these humble beginnings that you've come from and how you found your way to the car business. Uh, Let's start with growing up in the roughest part of Detroit you can possibly live in. Um, I mean, obviously, we uh, well, Detroit is Detroit, right? So um, it has a rep, <laughs> and it lives by it. <laughs> so it's it's very real. It was very scary. Um, there some some months I thought I wasn't going to see the next month. Some some years I thought for sure this is going to be the last. Um, you know. Robberies, you name it. My house getting caught on fire. I watched everything burn. Um, and that kind of stuff shapes you because it, it thickens your skin at a very young age. But you carry it with you. You know, all those memories, you don't forget. So obviously you never want to go back to that moment. And that's why you have to keep trying harder every day. That's right. So how did you find yourself in the car business? So when I left college and decided to go visit my father, who lived in Arizona at the time, um, I had to pay off college debt. So I started with the infamous Van Tile Group uh, out in the Southwest. I started one of the largest Honda dealerships in the Southwest um, and got my start there. And honestly, for me, it was just something to get 
you know, to pay the bills. And at the time, I did not know I was entering my professional career. Um, it was just, it was, you know, the Van Tau training is very process driven. The 12 steps, I'll never forget them. Um, and that's really what got me, uh, I guess, excited about the business and the opportunity to make so much money at such a young age. Um, and it just, it was fun. You get to talk to people. I was able to be myself. It was a very non judgmental business. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, everybody takes you for who you are. As long as you're treating each other well, everybody's selling cars, everyone's happy, and your consumers feel like, you know, this is a place I'll come back to again. It was kind of a no brainer for me. And, and uh, I didn't want to stay in Arizona. So in 2012, September, I came back to Michigan. Two weeks later, found auto loan options. He hired me and a programmer, and we were his two first uh, employees. And it's been eight years later, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. That's that's a great story. You know, this business has a way of sucking people in. You know, it's it's, it's addictive because here's the thing. Bottom line, we do make money. But what the thing this business does, it solves problems for people. It helps other people. It changes people's lives. It does so many things that are beneficial as a human being to other human beings. You know, yeah. so we, we provide a great service, whether you're in sales, retail, a vendor, whatever you're doing, you're, you're definitely, you're, you're helping other people. And, and it's, it's like that in a lot of things. You can actually, if you really dig deep, you can find that type of motivation in almost anything you do in this world. Um, if, you know, there's, there's ways that, you know, what you do is it's beneficial to the human race. It's you're helping them. You're helping the, the, the race or the people move forward. Correct. So people will be able to live well. But the thing about the car business is that it's an amazing business. There's so many amazing people. There's so many different levels of this business that if you want growth, you can find growth every single day. If you need something to learn, you can sit down and learn something every single day about how to do this job better, right? People That's okay. Like, yeah, but people like you, Nancy, are the reason why um, you know what you do and what you provide as a service with your with your company and with yourself is that you're helping people do all those things. You're helping people realize that a dealership could you know talking about subprime and I'm a subprime hero. I, I absolutely you know love subprime and I'm all passionate about helping and bringing light to that. And what you do is very much like that. What you do is trying to help people in that market. That market is getting bigger. Is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Every moment right now in this world with the way coronavirus did with lost jobs and all these people who, who who had fair credit. Now they have less than fair credit or people who had great credit now have fair credit, you know. So there's all these people who are now subprime and dealerships have to help them. There's a lot of dealerships who wouldn't even try to help these customers. So now they're starting to realize, wow, this market share is way bigger and it was always big. It was always a huge market share. It's just that they just ignored it. They ignored it because their friends or their family members weren't those types of people, right? It was definitely something that a lot of people kind of swept under the rug. And, you know, a, a lot of times you didn't know, you never knew who subprime managers were at a dealership. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's it's crazy to say, but it's reality, you know. Facts. All this time I didn't understand why because those, that's that's your front line for consumer. Those are your future consumers. Yep. That's the man that's going to build that relationship with your future consumers. I never understood why that subprime finance manager or special or whatever they want to call it secondary was the guy that wasn't or the girl that wasn't on their website most of the time. Believe it or not, I couldn't find those professionals on a website. And for the life of me, I never understood it. Uh, but I think as time goes, as time went by, I think more people realize that this is not going anywhere. This is necessary. You need to be more upfront about it. And, you know, what what, are, what better way to do it than just put yourself out there, let people know you're there to help them. And, you know, it's a good start. I, I personally think that that is, if not one of your most important people at your dealership. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about that. I mean, yeah. consumers that have had challenging times, that maybe your consumer forever, they're going to bring back their family, their friends, because you treated them right. 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 The thing that's actually starting to happen big inside of the, the, the shift from just the way people are purchasing right now, 
is mm-hmm. that there is so much that's happening that's affecting people's credit. There's so much that, that has, has shifted. But even before um, COVID came across or all of these other uh, things have adjusted inside of our life, the, the, the concept of a customer going through some bad times and then not being able to come back to you to purchase is, is like a, a mindset I can't wrap around. You spoke about it, about it the other day on, on how we were brought up in this business. When, yeah. when we were brought up in this business, subprime was subprime. The, the question we only had was, can I sell them a car? <laughs> what can I do? What, what do you want me to show them? Where do, where, where do you want me to go? Do I need all steps right. or do I just need a couple? Right. Right. Do, I need, do, I need, do I need all the references? Do I need, uh, do I need proof of residence? Do I need a proof mm-hmm. of residence? What that's do I need? Just tell me what I need. This person is this person. I can't. And that's I feel like banks came along and probably started to do more training on their programs, which I feel is extremely important. Um, if if I'm going to be honest, I'm going to definitely say I think a lot more dealerships need to be open open about all of the banks that are walking through their doors. Um, and you you have to stay in green mode. You can't sit there and, and think that you know everything because this business is an ever-changing business. Yes. There are things that you will learn about these banks programs every single day to help you sell more cars and help more people. Bam, right. You know, and, and that's the key. And, and people and companies like Nancy works for, they're, they're going to help you learn these processes too. So, like, here's the thing. You know, I know that I'm process-driven. So in order for me, I can say, hey, I want to do subprime, but until I got my processes in play that I am going to use consistently, mm-hmm. and, not, and every single time, I'm not going to just fray from it and sometimes work and sometimes not. You have to do it every single day. Be passionate about every application that your salesperson brings you as a manager. If you're a salesperson, be passionate about every customer that walks on your lot. Tell them how much you appreciate them, how much it means to you that you're, they're even sitting down with you, allowing you to take a credit out from them. Because these people are going through things. They're embarrassed to show you their credit. They're embarrassed to talk about their past history. But it's folks, so heartbreaking, the things that I see every day. Yeah, I do too. You know, it does. You know, it's it heartwarming at the same time. When they get help the right way, you should see the reviews they write for some of these dealerships. It'll put tears in your eyes. But the key to everything is you can do everything right. And I, I mentioned this the other night when I was on a podcast and when I was being interviewed, is that you can do you can meet and greet them. You can do everything. You can show them the right car. They can buy the vehicle. The payment's affordable. They leave the lot. You do a great delivery. But if you never follow up with these people and you don't send them a thank you note, you don't call them periodically, let them know how much you appreciate the business and ask them how they're doing, they will forget you. Even if you treated them like a queen or a king, they will forget you. Oh, and, yes, they will. I mean, And then I- they will come in and ask for someone else or just be like, I don't remember my person. And at that point, to me, that means you don't deserve that customer. So always follow up. So all you salespeople out there, no matter what kind of sales you're in, whether you're in car business, if you're in pharmaceutical sales, if you're in, you know, insurance sales, it doesn't matter. You have to follow up with everyone that you touch to include your current roster of clients. Your current roster of clients is actually where you can make the most amount of money even in the future if you use it right for referrals, for for follow up, for repeat business, for touch ups, add ons to their to their whatever, right? That's such a golden thing, and people underutilize their current database of people so much. And that's a whole other story. We can talk about that some more later. But oh, we I can go into that so deep. Oh, I know you can. So <laughs> we're, we're gonna get we're gonna get to the third question now. So the third question I'm gonna have for you is, and, and it's it's something we kind of talked yesterday on the phone. You know, we were trying to just you know get to know each other a little bit before the show started, and. Um, when we were talking, you you know, I know you mentioned some people in the past. I am sure that there's somebody who heavily influenced you, somebody that you can look back at and be like, this person made a huge pivot in my life by just what they taught me. Who would that person be? An easy one. Um, I, and I, I, it, it, I can't even talk about it sometimes without getting emotional because he took me at a very young age. I mean, I think I was like 22, 23. And eight years later has turned me into the woman I've always wanted to be. And that is a man that works in that office right there. And that owner of this company, Bob Chica, who owns and directs auto loan options. Um, he has taught me more about relationships and the value of nurturing them and taking care of your clients um, more than anybody has. And I think ever will. And uh, I owe 
a very huge portion of my success to that now. Cheers to him. It is. That's always good to have a mentor person like that in, in your in your work spot. You know, those mentors eventually one day are going to look at you as a mentor in a sense too. You know, I have I have people who've coached me up, raised me up, helped me become who I am, and then now they're looking at me because I've, I've really reached out and they're asked, they're they're looking for mentorship from me, and that's a beautiful thing. And that's but that's what a mentor wants. Like I know that if I was better to get mentored by my right. God. <laughs> like, so if I be mentor somebody like Lou, right, and I get him pumped up, and then one day he grows so big that I get influenced by what he's doing, and that's the whole, that's that's beautiful. It's your legacy, you know, and you're part of his legacy, and you're going to have a legacy of your own, and I know it's going to be a beautiful thing, and because you're just an awesome person, and you just keep doing what you're doing, you're so positive, reach out, get uncomfortable, like, you know, I really want to see this Nancy Marie Benjamin podcast, it needs to happen again, and I think that if you do this, and you put passion into it the way you are with everything else you do, I know it's going to be great, and I know that I would be there to support it. I know Lou would be there, and anyone, and and, when, and all these friends that are on here watching now. There's so many people who will support that. So that's a great answer. I can kudos to him. So Lou, do you, you, you really feel like he's pushing this podcast for you? Do you really feel like he wants to be here? <laughs> I told her that yesterday that I was going to. I'm going to make sure she does this podcast. I won't leave it. I won't leave it alone. So I really, um, for. For me, the only reason why, to be honest with you, that I really stopped, and um, I'm going to probably grab a tissue because it's hard for me not to get emotional about this. I only stopped the old podcast because after my father passed, I didn't have it in me to interview one more person. I mean, it literally was cut off the moment the podcast was picking up, and it was for me, you know, a no-brainer, obviously. I needed some time to mourn you know, the, the greatest man in my life. And I felt disrespectful to continue it for a little while. Um, and then COVID hit, you know, after, after I actually had a little bit of, uh, I, I guess, gut to start the program up again, the beginning of this year, we hit COVID. And that's when things started to fall for, you know, some of our dealers, unfortunately. Luckily, our company was untouched as far as, you know, um, sales and things like that. There were a lot of states that weren't affected. A lot of dealers had amazing record months, believe it or not. And some of them, unfortunately, didn't have, you know, had some not so great moments. And we stuck by those dealerships. Um, In fact, I think we might have been the only subprime lead generator that stopped the leads for dealerships that forgot to tell us to turn things off because we felt we felt it was the right thing to do. Um, we didn't feel right that, you know, right to charge people for leads that, you know, you weren't going to be able to work anyway. Right. It was the right thing to do, and I'm very happy that we did. Um, and they have glad we all started up and come back and I can't believe what they're doing now. I mean, I'm super, super impressed with the dealers that have come back after COVID. Industry definitely has thought out a lot more than, than it was um, in the earlier months, but I'm, I'm happy to see everybody back at it, selling cars, you know, helping customers every single day. And for us, it's really important who we choose as dealers. And I didn't mention this before, but um, I'm not going to work with any dealer that wants to sign up with me. I'm just not going to. You need to have the right knowledge, the right team, the right bank set up, the right inventory. We're going to be selective because we're a company based on reputation. If you know what you're going to do or what to do, we're setting our customers up for failure and we're setting your dealership up for failure and I'm not here to just take your money. I, I like to work with you month after month. And the only way to do that is to make sure that we get all those questions answered in the beginning. Boom. That's and that's because you're a dealer partner. You're not, you're not a, um, you're not a vendor. You're not an outside source. You want to be a partner. with the business. That's exactly right. When you partner, you take ownership of their business in your heart, you know? So when they fail, you fail. When they succeed, you succeed. And, and that's that's the only way to, to take any type of business when you're helping other people is that you have to become one with those people. You have to become that. Mm-hmm. So, like, if, if ABC Motor is is my client, I am now ABC Motor, right? You know, when I'm when I'm working with them, everything I do, I'm gonna it's, I'm passionate, just like the owner would be passionate about this business. I would be 
I would be upset if something didn't go the way I was planning it to go. You know, all those types of things. I can see that inside you. I actually see that your company's like that. I love that your owner and your company decided to hold the leads even on people who didn't ask to hold them because it was the right thing to do. Because, you know, those people, they don't think about all the little bills that they're paying out, the dealers and stuff like that. Because they're so worried. You forget all the expenses that you're... you're oh, yeah. And by, well, by, by you guys taking the initiative and, and saying, hey, look, we're going to pump the brakes on this for you guys because it's it's what we should be doing because I'm going to be giving you leads that are just going to sit there for no reason, right? So you guys, you all did the right thing there. That that shows you guys that you guys are not about the money. You're you're about people over profits. And that's a hundred percent. Integrity is one of the things that he taught me. Yeah, and I, I love that. And that's integrity is my number one to me. It's my biggest core value. It's something that I really try to focus my whole life around. Whether it's my home life, whether it's my work life. It's always going to be with integrity first. If I start with integrity, everything falls into place, right? So I love that you guys are like that. I love that you're like that. And I, I know that it's just going to blossom from there. This whole COVID thing was a, was a great time for a multitude of things. You know, I'm not saying the world, I hate to say you can with the word COVID, but I look at the bright, bright side of everything that we're doing. I look at when I see life and something negative happens, there's always a yang to that yin. You know what I mean? So there's always a positive side to something negative. And if you if you focus on that negative, you're yeah you'll you'll drown in it. You'll just be like, man, life is horrible. I can't handle. It. But if you focus on the positive or know what the positive is going to be because of this negative, it's easier to stay positive, keep moving forward, doing the right things, having that integrity, helping other people grow. Grow is so key, and you're doing that, Nancy. And I and I see that. I've seen I've seen even the growth of just the last few months during Corona with you. You know, I've seen that you're posting more. You're starting to get more excited about doing things. And I really want to keep encouraging you to do that, it's not to stop. Because when it starts to get uncomfortable is when you're doing it right. Right? So keep being uncomfortable. Right. That's literally what we preach. Now, behind me, what you guys don't see right now is our BDC is working at all of our dealer accounts right now, right behind you. And, it, you know, they walked in and they're like, what's, you know, they, they had a feeling what was going on, but it was interesting. But they, uh, they're happy to hear this because they're getting this insight from people outside of the office that are in the business and, you know, feel the same way about how we, how we value, you know, our consumers, our clients and everything. And that's what we teach them to do as well. I mean, they're here um, because they want to be here. They're not here because it's nine to five. They're here because they actually enjoy what they do. You know, hopefully they like me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure they do. You're, you're, you're contagiously, it's easy to like me. You know, you just have this coming, you know, obviously, I don't see you every day. You know, but, but what you put out there in your vibe is your vibe is very, is, yeah, I do see you every day, yeah. But, but, the, uh, but the vibe is very, it's very, you know, I'm, I'm an open person. I'm here to help. I love people. I love life. I just want to encourage people to enjoy life too. And, that's the way that translates to your work, your workforce too. When you when you can provide that to everybody, and everybody's going on that vibe, and they're feeding off each other, it's it's just a good good thing. You know, we yeah. had some people jump on this morning. Yeah, exactly. It's a family. Yeah.